Hey everyone, today we are focusing on section 3.4, proofs with perpendicular lines. And in order to begin this section, we are going to focus on the distance formula. Uh, you may or may not have been introduced to this, but this will find the distance, uh, the length of the line from one point to another. And an important thing to realize here uh, is the distance from a point to a line is the length of the perpendicular segment from the point to the line. So we're going to do an example to calculate the length of that perpendicular segment using this distance formula. And if you recall, the distance formula is the square root of the change in your x coordinates, that quantity squared, plus the change in your y coordinates, quantity squared. The example we are going to look at to start, uh, we're given this picture here and we are asked to find the length of line segment AD. Let's make that a little bit better here. So AD, point A is here, D is on this line here. We're looking for this perpendicular segment here because that's going to be the shortest distance from this point down to the line. So I already wrote out point A has the coordinate negative 1, 8, and point D has the coordinate negative 4, 2. So if we take this as our x1, y1, and x2, y2, we're just going to plug these values into this distance formula here. So we will find that the line segment AD is equal to the change in our x, so x2 minus x1, or negative 4 minus a negative 1. That quantity is squared, plus the change in our y's, so y2 is 2, minus y1, which is 8, that quantity squared. And we take the square root of that whole thing. From there, we then start doing our algebra. So we know a negative times a negative gives us a positive. So we end up with a negative 4 plus 1 quantity squared plus 2 minus 8 is a negative 6. That quantity is squared. Take the square root of the whole thing. And now we have negative 4 plus 1 leaves us with a negative 3 that's squared plus, if we square a negative 6, negative times negative gives us positive, and 6 times 6 is 36, so we end up with a positive 36 over here. Continuing on, we have line segment AD we're still working on. Uh, negative 3 squared gives us 9 plus our 36, so we end up with the square root of 45. Square root of 45 is not simplified, so we need to simplify that root sign. And what I have my students do is take that 45 and we need to break that down into prime numbers. So we know 9 times 5 gives us 45, and then 9 is 3 times 3. So we end up essentially with the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 5. Any, any time you have two of those square roots, you have a square root times a square root, gets rid of that square root. So we end up with 3 times the square root of 5 as our final answer, as our final answer here. So 3 square root of 5 is the length of line segment AD. Next thing we are going to look at is how to construct perpendicular lines. So we need a compass and a straight edge for this. And I'm going to walk you through the directions. So the first thing we want to do is have a line M and the directions say place the compass at point P and draw an arc that intersects the line twice. Label the intersections A and B. So I need to draw in some point that will give us a center point here. We'll call it point P as I said. I am going to open my compass so that it is a little bit farther from the point P and it passes the line a little bit. That way when I draw my arc I'm able to cross
cross over the line. So putting the compass at center point P, drawing my arc all the way around. And I have two intersection points. We're going to call them A and B. Step two says to draw an arc with center A, and then using the same radius, draw an arc with center B, label the intersection of the arcs as Q. So I'm not going to move my compass at all. I'm just going to take the same radius that I used from point P and put my compass at A. And I'm going to draw an arc down here near that center point between A and B. And do the same thing with center B, putting my compass on point B there. And drawing another arc there. So we have an intersection of our two arcs. We're calling that point Q. And then from there, draw line PQ. This is your perpendicular line to line M. So we need a straight edge. Connect those dots. And this is our perpendicular line to line M. The next thing we are going to look at is how to construct a perpendicular bisector. So we just constructed a perpendicular line to a given line. Now we'll be given a line segment and we're going to bisect or cut this in half with a perpendicular line. And the first thing we want to do is place the compass at A and use the compass setting that is greater than half the length of line segment AB and draw an arc. So we need to measure out, we need to expand our compass so that it is past what we visualize as the halfway point. So this is more than halfway. So I'm going to put my compass at A for the center of the circle and draw a big arc up and down because we need to have two large arcs that intersect each other. I'm going to move this up a little bit so you can see the top and bottom. And then we're going to repeat, the step two says to repeat the process from point B. So don't move the radius of your compass. Make the center point, point B, and draw another arc so that we intersect the first arc that we drew. And it should have something that looks like this. And these two intersection points of these two arcs, right here and here, we're going to connect those points as stated in step three. And then connect those points with a straight edge. And this is a perpendicular bisector. So we have our perpendicular and this line segment is congruent to this line segment. So if we call this point M uh, line segment AM would be congruent to BM. Um, from there, now that we've talked about some perpendicular lines, how to construct them, we're going to talk about a few theorems. And the first one we're going to talk about is the linear pair. So we know linear pairs uh, are two angles that are adjacent to each other and form a straight line. This takes it into a little bit more specific of a definition because now we're bringing in the term perpendicular. So linear pair perpendicular theorem says if two lines intersect to form a linear pair of congruent angles, then the lines are perpendicular. So congruent is the key word there because they have to be the same. So that makes angle one congruent to angle two. Therefore, line G is perpendicular to line H because if this is 180 degrees and they're congruent, 180 divided by 2 is 90 degrees. So that for makes them perpendicular. Another theorem that we're going to look at here is the perpendicular transversal theorem. 
In a plane, if a transversal is perpendicular to one of the two parallel lines, then it is perpendicular to the other. So we know these are parallel, this is perpendicular by corresponding angles. We can say that these two lines are per uh, both perpendicular. If H is parallel to K and J is perpendicular to H, then J is perpendicular to K. So that makes these perpendicular. We are going to do an example proof that goes along with that theorem that we just talked about, the perpendicular transversal theorem. And in this picture, we are given that H is parallel to K and J is perpendicular to H. And we're asked to prove that J is perpendicular to K. So the first thing we want to write down is what we are given. So statement number one is H is parallel to K and J is perpendicular to H. And this reason is given. Second statement, I'm going to take this idea of the perpendicular and we have to break it down into a number, essentially. So what that says then is that angle two is 90 degrees. So since we're using a number, we have to say measure of angle two equals 90 degrees. The reason for that is the definition of perpendicular lines. Our third step here, uh, if we look at the picture, we're told that these lines are perpendicular and we know corresponding angles are congruent. So angle two is congruent to angle six and that again is because of our corresponding angles. From there, we can then say that the measure of angle 6 is 90 degrees and that is through substitution because we're saying measure of angle 2 is 90, 2 is also equal to 6, therefore 6 has to be equal to 90. Uh, so substitution and that is from, let me move this over a little bit, steps uh, 2 and 3. From there, we only have one more thing to state here because we've proven that this angle here is 90 degrees, therefore J has to be per uh, perpendicular to K and that is again because of the definition of perpendicular lines. The last thing in this section uh, talks about Lines to a tran uh, lines perpendicular to a transversal theorem. So it kind of rotates and flips things a little bit from the previous theorem. Uh, lines perpendicular to a transversal theorem. In a plane, if two lines are perpendicular to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. So if we know M is perpendicular to P and N is perpendicular to P, we can then say that line M and N are parallel to each other. So that concludes today's lesson on proofs with perpendicular lines, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks.